It began with Alan Matheson Turing. His vision would inspire others to create things entirely new and transform the world. Alan J. Perlis, 1966. Software is like nothing else in this world except life itself in that it is in effect subject to evolution and it often causes us more problems than it's worth. Morris V. Wilkes, 1967. The EdTech had begun to work in May 1949 and we had developed a system of programming based on the use of a library of subroutines. Richard W. Hamming, 1968. Many people are attempting to use computers to replace man. I am much more interested myself in using man and machines as a working combination. Marvin Minsky, 1969. But the big change was going to thinking of a program as a structure sitting in the computer that another program can manipulate. So this made it possible in principle to make a program that could even think about itself. James H. Wilkinson, 1970. And I said, well, it, it's going pretty well. We should have something working quite soon. And it was finally in May of 1950 that it stored the program and it executed that program. So um, by the grace of God, it did work. John McCarthy, 1971. One part of the problem is to develop language in which we can express for our computer programs the facts and reasoning about the common sense world that um, humans have. Edsger W. Dykstra, 1972. When I decided to become a programmer, I took that decision because I had concluded that of theoretical physics and programming, programming embodied the greater intellectual challenge. Charles W. Bachman, 1973. Go back to 1960 again. You have to realize those are very slow computers and very slow disks, and we were doing man-sized jobs with them. So you had to use those resources with great care. Donald E. Knuth, 1974. Welcome to the technical typing course. Uh, please raise your hand if you've never used a computer before. Okay, well, this will be uh, a lot of fun for you, I'm sure. Uh, uh. Alan Newell and Herbert A. Simon, 1975. Unlike simple little AI program, real human intelligence is dealing, has such a huge body of knowledge that its problem is that for any task it wants to do, it must select out a small arena in which to do this task and it must get rid of almost everything else that it wants to do. And one of the persistent issues in studying human thinking is, is human thinking a one thing at a time series of steps? Or are all these neurons that sit up in your brain, and there are billions of them, are they all ticking away at once and doing things in parallel? Michael O. Rabin and Dana S. Scott, 1976. So that's a model for the lambda calculus that I could have discovered in 1957, but it took another 20 years before it was clear that we have a model for it. And I always regretted it. I would be rich and famous if I had discovered that in 1957. In the early 50s, I was a student at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, and I ran across Turing's paper about computable numbers. And I realized, looking at that paper, that here you have a technology that needs a science to support it. John Backus, 1977. Research is 90% failure. That it's very painful to the ego to, to fail again and again and again. I know I've <laughs> done an awful lot of failing in my career. Robert W. Floyd, 1978. I met Bob in, in the fall of 1962, actually. He introduced me to a brand new thing uh, that you could actually prove things about computer programs. You can actually be sure that your computer program is working if you look at it right way. Kenneth E. Iverson, 1979. There were really just two main things. One was simplicity and the other was practicality. 
But when after 16 years we're still fighting to, to teach the world about these simple things, uh, you know, you begin to realize the simple things are not obvious. Sir Charles Anthony R. Hoare, 1980. I had the idea to define programming languages in a way that gave enough information to the user of the programming language to be able to predict whether the computer would do what the programmer wanted it to do. Edgar F. Codd, 1981. It was necessary to discard all those data structuring concepts that were not familiar to end users and to take a fresh look at the addressing of data. Stephen A. Cook, 1982. The point is that showing a problem is NP complete suggests very strongly that there's not going to be a computer program that solves it efficiently, although in practice it can be solved, but it may take forever. Kenneth L. Thompson and Dennis M. Ritchie, 1983. A file is simply a sequence of bytes. Its main attribute is its size. Unix Systems has many features which make it easier for the programmer to write programs. These include formatless files, the hierarchical directory structure. All of these things make programming considerably easier than on most other systems. Nicholas E. Worth, 1984. Programming is the ideal ground, exercise ground for design. In fact, it is design in its very essence. Richard M. Karp, 1985. And similarly in statistical physics, in algorithmic game theory, and even in the study of social networks, I think the algorithmic lens will have a great deal of power. John E. Hopcroft and Robert E. Tarjan, 1986. In the past 30 years, we were concerned with making computers useful. In the future, we're going to be concerned with what we're going to use those computers for. You know, I'm a great believer in elegance, ingenious simplicity. I try to design algorithms and data structures that are beautiful and simple and maybe there is complexity in the analysis, but the algorithm can be programmed, can be proved correct. John Cock, 1987. We were a little naive in those days about how to sell projects, and Peoria would say, no, Watson wants the fastest computer. Forget all this business about, uh, you know, trying to make it uh, cost performance and figure out how to make it the fastest scientific computer out. Ivan Sutherland, 1988. Here's the console area. You can see the bank of switches on the left and some push buttons under my left hand. You can notice I had hair in those days. Here we see rubber band lines. You could place one end of a line and then extend the other end to wherever the light pen was. This seems fairly common today, but nobody had done that at the time that I tried it. William M. Cahan, 1989. The fact is that if decisions are made to cut corners here or there, believing that with software you can make little bridges over these potholes, there is a limit to what the software developer can reconcile. So what we have to do is try to teach more people enough about floating point that they won't make these very expensive mistakes. Fernando J. Corbato, 1990. I got my award in 1990. The work that I actually did was it began and was during the decade of the 1960s. Uh, and the thing that I had to remind myself was, uh, gee, that didn't look like it was that important anymore, uh, except that it is what we did in those days has become omnipresent in everything we do today. During the period 1966 to 1990, the first 25 years of the ACM AM Turing Award, Turing laureates helped set the stage for the vision of Alan M. Turing to become reality. <laughs>